Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. Today we are going to be properly introduced to the cache memory. However, before diving straight into it, we will first try to understand the importance of it. So, let's get to learning. Now, during our previous discussion of the hit rate or hit ratio, we saw from a program code of 100 instructions, 80 were being brought into the main memory. So, you might have thought about, why don't we just bring the entire code of 100 instructions into the memory itself? Let me take you through a more realistic illustration. We do use our PCs to play games, don't we? Consider the following games, GTA 5, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, COD Modern Warfare, the 2019 reboot we are talking about, Hitman 2, the 2018 reboot. These are all great games and the storage requirements of these are almost 100 gigabytes. The COD MW 2019 reboot even takes up more than 200 gigs of storage space. However, the main memory requirement of these are very less compared to this. Apparently, the recommended main memory requirement for GTA 5 is only 4 GB. For COD, Infinite and Modern Warfare, it's only 8 GB. And for Hitman 2, it's 16. Now, why is so? It's because our operating system provides us with the concept of virtual memory and demand paging. While playing these, or technically speaking, while our processors are executing the codes of these games, they don't really require the entire 100 GB code at once. And that's the beauty of it. That's why having a way smaller main memory, we can still play the games without facing any problems whatsoever. And just for the sake of understanding this concept, in simple manner, we took the example of the code segment of just 100 instructions. Now let's talk about the cache. Again, for the sake of understanding, I mentioned about cache memory as a single unit in our previous discussions. But to be precise, modern day systems have levels of cache memories. Generally, there are three levels of cache used mostly in today's system architectures. The L1, L2 and the L3 cache. Now, as we have multi-core processors in our machines nowadays, you probably have heard the terms dual, quad, octa-core. Let me tell you, these belong to the MIMD family of Flynn's taxonomy. I hope you remember that from our computer architecture classifications discussion. Now, L1 cache is embedded in the processor itself right from the days of its origin. Later, when the L2 caches emerged, they were incorporated in the motherboard in their initial days. But now, they are also a part of the processor itself. To be precise, different cores of the processor have their own L1 and L2 caches. Now, coming to the L3 caches, they are also implanted in the processor, yet shared by all the different cores of the processor. By now, you probably have the idea about these levels. Size-wise, L1 is the smallest, yet it is the fastest among all the other caches. L2 caches come after L1 and these are used to store the frequently accessed data, which are second in priority, also frankly can't really be incorporated within the L1 cache due to the limitation of space. Finally, the L3 caches are the largest of all and these are also called shared cache. Now, I hope the idea of different cache levels are clear to you. In our later discussions, for the sake of simplicity, we will assume to have only a single cache, mostly. However, I'll provide detailed illustration of the various levels during the explanations of cache level related numerical problems. Now, let's get to know about a few terminologies related to cache. The first one, cache hit. During execution, if the processor is able to find out the required information in the cache, we call it a cache hit. And the time required by this process is known as hit latency. Here, using a specific data structure called tag directory, the processor finds out whether the required information is present in the cache or not. Now, if the information is absent from the cache, that is, if the info is missing from the cache, we call it cache miss. In this case, as discussed earlier, the processor will seek for the information in the next level of memory, which is the main memory, and bring it from there. Also, meanwhile, place it in the cache itself. This entire period of time is called miss latency. And FYI, if the information is absent also from the main memory, the situation is called page fault. And if found, we call it page hit. 
During page fall, the OS, as it manages all the intercommunication between the main memory and secondary memory, looks for the information in the last level of the hierarchy, that is the secondary storage, and brings it back in the main memory. This entire process is known as page fault service. Thus, the time taken to perform it is termed as page fault service time. Now, we already know that the information whose requirement frequency is very much higher than the others are generally kept in the cache. Now, this prioritizing of the parts of the main memory which are to be loaded inside the cache is done using the locality of reference. In simpler words, there are two approaches based on which the processor can decide which data of the main memory should be placed inside the cache. The first approach is based on spatial locality. It means at a particular point of time, if a memory location is referred by the processor, chances are the nearby locations will probably be referred in near future. Next approach is based on temporal locality. It means if the memory location is referred, then there are chances that it will be referred again. This idea will be more clear during the study of cache replacement policies. Well, that was all for this session. I guess since we learned the organization of cache memory, now it will be easier for us to get into the different cache memory mapping techniques and we can have a better understanding of the intercommunication of cache and main memory in details. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.